Hey guys, in today's video I want to talk about the ability of certain elements to undergo orbital hybridization. This is basically the ability of certain atoms to combine their electron orbitals to produce hybrid orbitals. These hybridized orbitals provide additional bonding sites and can explain unusual molecular structures and geometries that wouldn't be possible with standard chemical properties. For the purposes of this presentation, we will use the element nitrogen. Located on the right side of the periodic table in between carbon and oxygen, Nitrogen's electron configuration is helium 2s2 2p3. As you can see, there are five valence electrons in its outer shell, with the single paired valence electrons provided by the 2s orbital and the three single electrons coming from the half filled 2p orbital. Remembering our basic rules of chemistry, each atom is looking for a full complement of eight valence electrons to complete its outer shell and obtain its noble status, also known as the octet rule. As such, Nitrogen requires an additional three electrons to completely fill its 2p subshell as seen in the prototypical chemical compound ammonia. Three hydrogen atoms offer to share their single orbiting electron with nitrogen, while nitrogen shares its 3p orbital electrons, one with each of the three hydrogen atoms, giving each hydrogen atom its full complement of two circulating electrons and nitrogen its eight. Since each atom contributes one electron to share with its neighbor, this is called covalent bonding and is represented by a bar between the two atoms, indicating each atom's contribution to the bond. However, elements like nitrogen with its single paired electrons and oxygen with its two groups of paired electrons can unselfishly share these paired orbital electrons with electrophilic atoms, such as metals or hydrogen atoms, that have lost or given up their own electron, becoming positively charged ions or cations. Oxygen and nitrogen will share their paired electrons and bind to coordinate sites on the cation metal. This asymmetric sharing of electrons is therefore known as coordinate covalent, dative, or dipolar bonding, and can be represented by an arrow indicating the asymmetric electron sharing. This type of bonding is useful in chelating molecules where nitrogen and oxygen moieties bind to heavy metals, allowing them to be removed from foods or the body. Looking back at our ammonia molecule, Nitrogen is willing to share its lone paired electrons with the electrophilic hydrogen cation or proton producing the positively charged molecule ammonium. Since the molecule is positively charged, it is usually seen as a salt combined with an electronegative element such as chlorine. This apparent selfless contribution of the nitrogen atom is actually facilitated through a property called orbital hybridization, more specifically sp3 orbital hybridization. Remember that the electrons aren't randomly orbiting the nucleus of an atom, but hold specific energy levels defined by shells and subshells. Shells are the largest partitions of electron energy around the nucleus and are numbered sequentially from 1 to 7. Subshells define the orbital path of the electrons in each shell, and there are four stable subshells listed in increasing energy as S, P, D, and F. Each subshell contains an odd number of orbitals with S having 1, P3, D5, and F7, and each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Therefore, the S subshell can have a maximum of two electrons, P6, D10, and F14. Finally, the number of subshells in each shell is determined by the shell number itself, i.e. shell number 1 has one subshell, shell 2 has two subshells, shell 3, 3 subshells, etc. For clarity, we'll simplify our model and build it back up. This graphic depicts an atom with three shells, labeled sequentially 1, 2, and 3. We'll first look at shell 1, the closest shell to the nucleus. As we said above, the shell number determines the number of subshells, therefore shell 1 contains a single S subshell. The S subshell contains a single orbital, and this orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. As such, Shell 1 is now complete with two electrons. Shell 1 describes the valence electrons of the first two elements at the top of the periodic table, hydrogen and helium. Moving on to shell 2, since the shell number determines the number of subshells, shell 2 will have two subshells, S and P. Just like in shell 1, the S subshell has a single orbital which can hold a maximum of two electrons. However, the P shell has three orbitals, each of which can hold two electrons for a total of six. Shell 2 is now complete with a total of 8 electrons. Shell 2 describes the valence electrons of the second row of elements on the periodic table from lithium to neon. 
maintaining the pattern, shell 3 contains three subshells, S, P, and D. As before, S contains a single orbital with two electrons, P has three orbitals, each containing two electrons for a maximum total of six, and D has five orbitals, each containing a maximum of two electrons for a max total of ten. Shell 3 is now complete with a total of 18 electrons. Shell 3 completely defines the valence configuration of the third row of elements from sodium to argon and contributes to the valence electrons of the fourth row from potassium to krypton. Looking back at nitrogen's electron configuration, the valence electrons occupy the second shell, which again contains the two subshells S and P. As such, we can get rid of our third shell in our graphic model. The completed first shell corresponds to the non-valence electrons denoted as helium in our electron configuration. The completed 2s subshell corresponds to the lone paired valence electrons of nitrogen's outer orbit. The 3p orbitals are each half-filled containing a single electron corresponding to the three potential binding sites of the nitrogen atom. Unfortunately, the concentric spherical shells, subshells, and orbitals depicted in our graphic model is a bit of an oversimplification. The S subshell with its single orbital is spherical and basically defines the statistical path of its two orbiting electrons, just like in our original model. However, each of the 3p orbitals are dumbbell-shaped orthogonally oriented along the z, y, and x axis in space. The green and blue coloration represents the positive and negative lobes respectively and is an arbitrary designation based on the wave function that defines the statistical path of the electrons. Again, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons for a total of six in the P shell, but in nitrogen, each orbital is half-filled, holding a single electron for a total of three. Now let's superimpose our S subshell with its single orbital and two electrons on our P subshell with its three orbitals, each containing a single electron for nitrogen's total of five valence electrons. Since, in the second shell, the S and P orbitals have similar energies, they can actually combine into four hybridized sp3 orbitals, all of which have an identical energy level. In addition to adding the fourth potential binding site, the S orbital contributes to and enlarges the positive lobe of the hybridized orbitals while subtracting from the negative lobe, producing this asymmetry, as opposed to the symmetric dumbbell orbitals of the P shell. Since the hybridized negative lobes are essentially negligible, we can remove them from our model for clarity. We now have four lobes, each arranged at 109 degree angles around the nucleus, which explains the tetrahedral binding geometry of molecules such as ammonium. Finally, remember we have five valence electrons, three of the lobes containing a single electron, which can participate in covalent bonding, with the fourth lobe containing two electrons that it is willing to share with an electrophilic cation, such as metals or hydrogen, via a dative or coordinate covalent bond, and thus giving the molecule its net positive charge. Quick summary, but hopefully it helped you understand the variable bonding capabilities of atoms such as nitrogen. If you have any questions, post below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.